Welcome back. So last time we set up a development environment using the tools virtual env and pip. And we're at a point where we finalize some coding and need to add the updates to git, which is a version control system. Also, we'll be going over how to use GitHub and how it relates to your project. So be sure to create an account on GitHub if you don't already have one. So why do we need to use a version control system? Mainly so we can create snapshots of our project at given times. Usually we're, on, we're at a stopping point if a feature has been implemented, for example. So if you create these snapshots periodically, then down the road, if you screw up at some point and destroy your code beyond repair or lose some files, you can go back to an earlier snapshot. You can think of them as, as really just like save points throughout the history of your program that you can easily go back to in case of a disaster. So installing Git is easy. You just want to head to this link here, which is in the video's description, and then follow the instructions for your specific operating system. So with Git installed, we can now create a repository or repo for our project. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about GitHub. So first, it's vital that you understand that Git and GitHub are different tools. So Git is used to store and manage your local repository on your local computer, while GitHub stores a copy of your local repository on the cloud. GitHub is really like a social network based around repositories. Developers can share code, work on projects together, and, and just really connect. It powers the uh, open source community. So at this point you just need to know that you should use GitHub to start sharing your code and to keep a copy of it off your local computer in case something bad happens to your computer and you can't re recover your local repository. In that case you can recreate your project locally using the repository on GitHub. Also it's important to keep both your local and GitHub repositories in sync. So what that means is whenever you add a snapshot of your project to your local repository, you should also add that same snapshot to your GitHub repository as well. And I have a document here that has two different workflows. So the first one is for when you start a project, and then the second one is when you update, is for updating an existing project. So let's start with the former. So we've already completed these first two steps. And so we now just need to set up a new repo using this command git init. And init stands for initialize. And this needs to be done in your project root too. And we discussed what the project root exactly means in the last video. But really it's just the main top level directory of your project. Okay, so next we need to add a readme file. So touch readme.md. So it's pretty common to use this format called Markdown, which has the extension .md, but you can use .txt as well. And this readme file is literally the face of your project to GitHub users. And you basically need to include like the project details on this file so people know what the project is all about, how to set it up, etc. For now, just add the project name and I guess like a sentence or two detailing what it's about. So read me. Okay, cool. So going back to the document here, the next thing that we need to do is add a git ignore file. Make sure you note that there's a period there. So git ignore. So anything that you add to this file will be kept out of your local repository. And of course, any, anything that you leave out of your local repository will also be kept out of your GitHub repository as well. So common files that you want to exclude from your repository are your virtual environment. So we'll add that directory as well as .pyc files and then system files like the DS store file that's for Mac users. And there are pre-created .gitignore files that you can use. 
you could just simply Google Python dot get ignore file. Okay, so now we want to take a snapshot of our project. We can use that with the command git add dash a. You also want to make sure that you do this with your virtual env activated. We can tell again that it's activated because the name of the virtual env folder is right here in parentheses. So this command takes that snapshot and adds it to an area called staging. Don't worry about what staging is for now. Just know that that snapshot has not been stored in the local repository yet. It's just floating out there in the ether pretty much. So in order to add that snapshot to the repository, use this command, so git commit. And so this commit message, so take note of the message here between the quotes. This is a message that details what our commit is about. And you really just want to detail what you did since the last time you committed. Perhaps you fixed a bug, or maybe you added a unit test. So in this case, we can just say started a new Python project. And you can take a look here and it says five files were changed. And if we go back here, we can see that we're adding one, two, three, four, five files. Remember we excluded our virtual M directory. So that's why there's only five files being added. Cool. So if we go back to our workflow here, the next thing that we want to do is add a new repository on GitHub. So assuming that you already registered with GitHub, you can click here or you can click down here. It's a new repository. And you want to name the GitHub repository the same name as your project directory. You can just put in a little description here and then click create repository. So once that's created, you're, redirect, you're redirected to this page. You can see some similar instructions here that we're going through. So what we really need here is the remote. And you can think of the remote as a link to your GitHub repo. You need to add this to your local repositories config in order to link your local repository with the repository on GitHub. So let's just grab this here and we can just copy and paste this. Paste it and then press enter. So that established the link there between our local repository and our GitHub repository. Now if we return to our workflow. Okay, so now we are ready to push the local repository to GitHub. And to do that, we can just use the command git push origin master. So in your end, you will probably be prompted to enter your GitHub username and password. So this was a successful push. So if you go back to your GitHub repository here, click refresh, you can see all five files here that we included. And notice how the text that we added, added to that readme file is displayed here. And this is literally what people will look at first when they visit your project. Cool, so now we're all set up. So if we go back to this page here, so since we finished this, that's the first workflow. The second workflow is very easy. So whenever you make any changes to your local project, you just want to follow the workflow of taking a snapshot. And this git add period command is the same as git add dash a. Just git add period is going to be deprecated soon. So you probably want to use this command. And I'll go ahead and update this document. So again, whenever you make any changes to your project, go ahead and take the snapshot. Add that snapshot to your local repository. And then push the changes up to your repository on GitHub. Okay, so this is a little recap here. So whenever you start a new project, you can go ahead and create and activate a virtual environment, install any dependencies with pip, add those dependencies to your requirements.txt file. Again, you're using pip for that. Create a local repository, create a repository on GitHub, take a snapshot, 
add that snapshot to your local repo, push it up to GitHub, and then for normal development, after setup, you want to go ahead and activate your virtual environment. Do some coding and take, <laughs> take a snapshot at a stopping point, add that snapshot to your local repository, push to GitHub, and then you can deactivate your virtual environment. I don't think I showed you, but to deactivate your virtual environment, you just use the command deactivate. And then when you're ready to work again, you can just activate it. Cool. So that's it. And I know this process may seem a little bit daunting at first, but believe me, it will become second nature very, very soon. So thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon.